Um, Why do I have a plate button here? Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the AP Laser Workshop. I um, apologize for the delay, but uh, another adventure. Uh, what's going on is right now we're doing a lot of moving, and with a lot of moving comes a lot of uh, moving parts. And sometimes parts get moved that shouldn't be moved, so we're making do with some other equipment. So if you hear some audio vari variances or poor quality and audio I apologize in advance we are working with different equipment and making it work um, so we can keep this going for you uh, anyways uh, I'll start uh, again uh, I'm Aaron and this is Alicia she's kind of really running things here lately and um, uh, making me feel more and more useless every day <laughs> but she's a wizard with this machine so we're gonna, I love how fast she's growing but anyways today we are going to do some sporting goods stuff, okay? I say that in general because we have everything from a baseball bat. We'll do, we be doing a baseball bat later. We have a uh, softball, or not softball, but we have some basketball, football, and then some also some sporting good stuff like a tumbler or some acrylic that we can do to make a stand with uh, for your favorite player. Um, uh, grandma's going nuts over these because uh, every grandma's favorite player is uh, uh, playing on a, a youth team somewhere. <laughs> so anyways, we're going to have, we're going to go over a lot of this stuff. Um, uh, see, Frank has joined us again. Thank you, Frank, for joining us back. Uh, I, I hear that your perseverance, you're, that you're, you're very resolute, I'm sorry, that you're even here when we're not here. And I <laughs> apologize. Last, uh, last week I was in the a uh, great tropical state of uh, Wyoming, up in Casper, Wyoming, visiting some really good friends of ours, Wild Gear. Um, learned a lot from Wild Gear. I think I learned more from them than they did from me. Uh, they, uh, Wild Gear, they specialize in tumblers like this right here. And they have six of our machines. They have four 1812s and two, uh, or uh, five 1812s and a 2616, but they're swapping out one of their 1812s for a 2616. Uh, so they're going to have, but anyways, they have six of our machines and they're running nonstop. I mean, they're fighting each other over getting their work orders on these machines. It's really exciting to see um, the AP laser working in that uh, commercial, in that high, high volume commercial capacity. It's really, uh, um, really exciting to see. So anyways, uh, a lot of what we're going to do today is uh, already done, but uh, Alicia will go over some of the file setup and settings she used. Uh, we did have to run like the basketball and the football and stuff prior because it's just time consuming. If we did a whole show where we were just engraving things, then there'd be a lot of, um, a lot of time where we'd have to fill and talk. And, and uh, from what I'm told, the only person that loves the sound of my own voice is me. So, and I do love the sound of my own voice, but anyways. <laughs> so um, anyways, thank you all for joining us and we're about to get into this, but before we do, if you haven't already, please click uh, subscribe down below and like our video. But also, when you subscribe, make sure you go up to your bell settings and make sure that you're 
click on what type of notifications you want from us as well. So you'll get notified when we do go live. Um, obviously, uh, it, we get very busy, so e we do send out emails and some other stuff, but it's sometimes, it's, sometimes it's easy for us to get caught up in something else because we're so busy nowadays and we'll forget. But if we get that notification, we'll be like, oh, time out, I have to watch this live. Uh, and uh, also, uh, feel free to ask questions in the chat along the way. Um, as, we, uh, as we go, I'll answer questions in the chat and, uh, or on the video. And uh, anyways, so I'm going to keep rambling on here. <laughs> um, uh, I'm going to kick over to Alicia so she can tell us a little about the, the stuff that she already ran and how she set it up. So she can get into that a little bit. Yeah, all right, let's get going. Um, as Aaron stated, you know, we kind of tried to run everything beforehand just to get an idea of the settings um, as well as how things are going to look um, and just having that display ready for you guys so that you can see the final product um, rather than us trying to rush it out of the machine and push it over on the table. Um, it's a little easier to have things done and then I can just show you kind of how things, how I set things up and go from there. Um, but we've got lots of different things um, that I've kind of tried to make for us. And I know that the basketball and the football were big. People want to know how we did those. So I'll pull up the settings for those real quick. I will say I started with kind of a generic image. I am an alumni from, um, University of Michigan, so I say go blue, go Wolverines. <laughs> um, so I did kind of, ha I have this little kind of generic, um, it's not technically the U of M logo, um, so I tried to stray away, but still kind of keep that, you know. Um, that, that's a good point, Alicia. If you're yes. doing universities <laughs> and stuff like that, uh, I remind you, if you don't have express permission to use their material, you need to be very careful because they have uh, they have schools, law schools of law students that they're just itching to send after people. And it's free, le free le legal for them. They're like, hey, write some cease and desist for these. Sure, here's a practice. Go ahead. Anyways. Yep. And I will say, you know, it probably is easy to partner, maybe not with the bigger universities. They might be <laughs> a little less willing, but, you know, if you have a local community college or just like a local sports team, um, you know, you can always ask them if for their permission to use their logo or to even just sell things at their venues with their permission. Um, let's see, so if I go and if I start with that, you can pull, I had that image made already and I'm just gonna pull it up in, let's see if I open up Lightburn and then we can go up to the file up in the corner and I'll do import. Sometimes I hit open, we don't wanna go to open, we wanna go to the import. Um, so we can go to that sports day, and I'm going to find which one I want here. And I have that Wolverine logo. Go ahead and open that up. It'll import it in here. And you can see this is way bigger than we want it to be, um, but we can scale that down as needed. Up in the corner here, by the little lock, you can see we have the width and the height here. So we can just adjust that as needed. Um, I'm just going to scale it down to like five inches wide and make sure you have that lock hit. Um, if you don't, then, whoop, and I am on the rectangle tool. You always want to make sure you're on that select tool so you can move things around as well. <laughs> um, but make sure you have that lock tool because if you have this unlocked and I say I scale this up to seven, it's going to distort it. which. You know, maybe something that you want to play with, um, but I like to keep that locked. And if I want to distort at all, I can always make sure I have this select tool on here, and then you can just distort it that way. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that. And we could go ahead and just run this image on its own. If we go into the adjust image settings in here, you can see that we have kind of what it would look like if I just ran that image. Um, but what I like to do is if I have this highlighted, you can go down under preview here towards the bottom, there's a trace image button. Go ahead and hit that trace image, wait for it to load a little bit. But then you can see all these pink outlines here. That's what's gonna be traced. Um, but you can see there's a little bit of fracturing in here that we can just go ahead, 
use these sliders to adjust as needed. And we'll go ahead and hit OK when we have something we like. We can move this guy out of the way or just get rid of it completely. But then you see we have that outline. Another important thing to note is if you want this to be engraved and not cut out, make sure over here in the cut and layer button, uh, make sure you have that set to fill in the mode. If you have it set to line, it would cut all of that out, which I don't think that would look too good if you're trying to, uh, <laughs> I don't think it would go very well trying to cut that out of the basketball or the football. Um, so I'm going to make sure that's set to fill have that ready to go and then if you go to the preview button up here you can see where everything's going to fill in um, and if you want to invert that something really simple that you can do if I go ahead and ungroup this guy up here um, and then you can select this outline up top here if you do another outline around that you can set the offset distance to whatever you like you can bring it higher or lower um, you can change round, there's different corner, make it sharper, um, and the outward and the inward. But if you go ahead and do that and then hit the preview again, you can see everything has kind of been inverted. So there's lots of different things you can do, you know, just pull your images in here, kind of play around with it. Like I said, you could run sh just the straight image, um, or you can do the trace and kind of play around with it that way as well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go back to my files in here and I'll pull up exactly what I had so we can kind of go over that a little bit. Let's see what we got here. So this was the initial design that I had for that football engraving. And you can see I kind of made like a rough outline of the football as well just so I had kind of an idea of the size that I wanted the engraving to be and kind of where I wanted it to be within that. Um, and you can see if I go to the preview, it doesn't have that outline obviously because that's just a framework for me to kind of get an idea of where it's going to be on the football. Um, and you can see that it's going to engrave all of these dark parts there. If you kind of zoom in, you can see like the exact line width and everything in there. But overall, it's just going to have kind of this image right here. Um, but And I played around with different settings, went into our Facebook user group for different ideas. Um, these are new materials for me. I've not done any of the, I've done a lot of different types of leather, but all leather is different. Um, and so the settings that I fell on that really worked out for me was, and this is with the, I should mention, this is with the 100 watt um, laser as well. Um, so it's going to vary depending on the wattage, but um, I went with a speed of 18 and a power of 30 for that, um, and that kind of engraved it just how I liked it. Um, and again, you can do different tests, you know, I always suggest having something extra on hand, um, and you can have that tester football, that tester basketball, where you're just running small little tests um, all over that, you know, going back to it until you find what works for you. If I wanted to do a test of this, you know, I could either scale this down to be really small or you could even, if you want to do just a section of it, I can go ahead to one of these shape tools here, kind of grab that around there. If you have that selected and your design selected here, you can go down to this little box down here and then we have just a little section that would run so that you just have that little test that you can run super small scale on whatever test item that you have um, to make sure that you have those settings correctly. You could even, um, if you duplicate this, you know, change that to a different color down here and change the, the speed and power settings to another speed and power so that you can run those tests simultaneously. Um, saves you a bit of time, it's just going to run to different things and then you can see, oh, this is the one that I want out of, you know, the lineup of tests there. But, you know, it's pretty straightforward for simple engravings like this. Have your design ready to go, um, you know, plug it into the machine and just let it run. I will say too, um, to get this set up on the machine, I left it in the box it came in kind of set that up where I wanted it to be, uh, put a little tape underneath the box 
on the machine so that it stuck there, it wouldn't move around, and just ran it with the four inch lens right on top. Um, so it was a fairly easy rig to set up. I just ran it in the box so it was kind of sturdy in there and I didn't have to set up anything crazy, but I don't know, there might be other ways to do that as well. That's just what worked for me on the fly. <laughs> what lens did you use with that, Alicia? I used the four inch. The four inch yep. lens. Now for a lot of you, many of you who don't know that the four inch lens, it gives you a larger focal range, mm -hmm. okay? So our standard lens, which is something we're gonna use for most applications, be it flat or rotary, is going to be our two inch lens because that allows us the standard kind of focal range that we need to get our, our, our good quality engraving. If we go higher than that, we can have an inch and a half lens, and some people even play with the inch lenses, but those are very, very sensitive. Inch and a half lens will give you finer, a finer laser point, and it'll allow you to get a little bit more detail, but your margin of error or tolerance is very low for your focal range. So if you're using an inch and a half lens, you have to be dead precise with your focus and just to make sure everything comes out normal. But then we go up to a three inch lens, which gives you a little bit larger focal range, which makes your, which means that your, uh, your range of effectiveness for the beam is a little bit larger. And that will let you do stuff like, I, I prefer to do like my bricks and some, some acrylic engravings with my, um, with my three inch lens, because it gives me a little bit more, uh, takes away some of the lining you might get mm -hmm. from a two inch or inch and a half lens. And then the four inch lens, we absolutely have to have for our curved surfaces that we're not putting on the rotary. So if we're doing a basketball or a football, or um, we go to the uh, adverse spectrum of that, we go to a casket. If you're doing something that's got like a curved top or a barrel, you'll need to use a four inch lens so you can kind of get uh, have a range of focus that's going to uh, allow you to uh, engrave that um, evenly and effectively. So, thank you, Alicia. Mm -hmm. um, that's a very good explanation. I didn't, I just kind of ran for it, so I'm glad that you're here to <laughs> kind of pull me back a little bit. <laughs> um, but yeah, so for the football and the basketball, it's just really as simple as getting the design you want, um, you know, sizing it to the size that you want. Um, you know, I always suggest having that tester so you can run your tests and kind of going from there. But using that four inch lens, um, you're gonna get past those curves. And that, I mean, it's really as simple as that. It, it's not as scary as I thought it would be. I was very intimidated by the idea of engraving directly on these inflated balls. Um, but it's, I mean, you just press and go and it, and it goes. <laughs> um, if I want to get into something a little more complicated, um, I had a lot of fun designing these cute little um, acrylic trophies here. Let me pull one up here. Let's see where we're at. And we're upside down. Let's do this. We're going to flip it so we can see it a little better. There we go. And we're going to mirror it just so we can see the kind of design there. But this is something, so I should mention too, um, I ran these on our cast acrylic, which we do, I think we have available in our store now. So um, I definitely recommend it if you're doing engravings using the cast over the extruded acrylic. Extruded is really good for cutting through and doing complex shapes. Um, but the cast acrylic gets you really, really good um, engravings, especially if you're doing photos like this. Um, you're going to get just really crisp and clean results. Um, so if I want to go through kind of the basic setup for something like this, I do have another stock kind of photo here that we have. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to pull this into my photo editing software. And I do everything in Photoshop. That's just what I've learned. That's what I know. But everything that I'm doing in Photoshop, you can do in Corel. Um, and I'm sure any other photo editing software has these kind of, they're very basic settings. Um, they should carry over to pretty much anything. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and open up that picture. Let's figure out where that went. The baseball player. Open that guy up. Give it a second to load there, and then we have that loaded in. 
and you can see this is kind of a noisy picture. There's a lot going on in the background that I'm not going to want to engrave. Um, and we want to get this to a flat black and white image um, as we're not going to obviously be able to engrave color, unfortunately. But you know, you could always go in and paint it or if you have access to something like a UV printer, you can do something like that on it afterwards as well. But the engraving gets you a really nice, crisp, clean image. Um, and with the, what I like to do is I actually purchased, um, I have some of these little light up bases. Um, so it kind of adds color to it as well when it's finished. But we can go in here and the simple settings, if we go up to image, and adjustments and we're just going to change that to a black and white image we can go ahead and hit ok if we go over to filter and again in Corel I believe there's still the filter option and there's still um, there should be a sharpen option in there and we're just going to hit unsharp mask and we're going to get this up to we've got two of these sliders that I like to use I don't usually touch the threshold down at the bottom but the amount and the radius, we're gonna go ahead and adjust to our liking here just to bring out some more details. So we're just gonna keep, see like, this is a little too much. There's getting kind of wonky there. So you just kind of slide it until you get something that's kind of brings out the details a little more, but not too much as well. And so we're just gonna kind of slide those around a little bit till we get something we like. I think that's pretty good. We're going to head, go ahead and hit OK. And then we've got that mask applied. If I zoom out a little bit, again, we're going to want to get rid of some of this background as well. I don't want to add that to my engraving. You definitely could, um, you know, but I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. So something really cool that we can do if we go to select up here, we can hit subject. You could also go in with your lasso tool or you could just go in with the eraser, you know, and just really carefully go around and erase everything. Um, but something really cool that Photoshop has is you can go up to the select and do the subject. And that's gonna give you a pretty good um, kind of masking out of the subject. If we go up to our quick selection tool right here, we can go in, make sure we're on add. You can adjust the size that you want your cursor to be and just kind of clean it up a little bit more. Um, so I've got that guy selected. Let's clean it up just a teeny tiny bit here. And I'm gonna make sure that this is unlocked as well so I can edit it a little more. Um, if we go back to the select tool and we hit inverse that's going to select everything around our subject and we can just go ahead and delete it so then we just have the character you know that we want to engrave and we have that ready to go and then it's just as simple as doing a file and export and I'm going to go ahead and export it as a PNG you could also do a JPEG um, it would just have that white background. I like to isolate it to just um, to have that transparent background that I had. You can change the settings, you know, the scale that you want there. I think it's probably good as is. We can go ahead and hit export. I'm just going to do it to my desktop so I can find it. We're going to save it as baseball player. Get that, wait for that to export a little bit. And then something else I like to do so that I have the outline of the person um, if we go back up, we had that exported, you know, and you can save this as well as your own Photoshop file or Corel file so that you have that to come back to. But if we go back up to the image and adjustments right where we did black and white, we're going to go up to levels and you can change that to either all black or all white so that you have kind of an outline here that you can use to do a trace and a cut. And then you have that exact cutout for, um, your trophy in Lightburn. So I'm going to go ahead and export the black version of this as well. Um, do an export as, just exactly the same as we did before. Export it and I'm just going to do baseball player outline. Great. Okay. So we've got our two picture files there. We can go back into Lightburn. I'm just going to get rid of this guy so we can start something new. 
Um, and we're going to go up to the import button. We're going to go to my desktop where I saved those pictures. Baseball player, we've got the outline and the baseball player. Hit open. Wait for those to load in. And then you see we've got both of those loaded in. Great. And then if we go here and go down to trace image, you can see where we've got the outline. And again, just as we did with the Wolverine logo, just go ahead and clean that up where you want it to be, get rid of that guy, and then you know you can go in here and maybe it's a little too spiky for your liking, you can go ahead and clean that up. Um, if you ungroup the image and go over to the node tool on the side here, you can go in and adjust these, you know, however you want to. But this is good enough for me for now. Um, and we can go ahead, we got this guy and this guy, and we can line them up in there best we can. And then if we have them both selected, we want to make sure, okay, that is set to line. Hold on, let's figure out what's going on. Got them both selected. Nope. Maybe not. Got my line. Got my picture selected. And there we go. So we want to make sure we have apply mask to image down here. Go ahead and hit OK. And then you got that image mask on there. You can see if you move it around, it'll kind of move around. If you move the image around, it's going to move around within that mask. Um, so you can adjust it as you need it. And we can do select these two guys again. And flatten image mask. There we go. So now we just have that straight image ready to go in there. And then if we want to, actually, let's go back. Let's backtrack. Before we flatten that image mask, let's copy that outline. And so we have two of those. And let's line them up together. And if you hit this home button right here, it's going to make sure that they're even there. Just so we have the outline saved um, so that you can still cut that out. When you do the uh, flatten image mask, it flattens, it gets rid of that outline, um, which we want to cut out the image. So we want to make sure we have that saved. And what I like to do is if we go over to the outline tool, and then you can kind of, you know, you have that outline. And you can make that as big as you want so it doesn't kind of go out all the way. We don't want it super close. Maybe you do. It's completely up to you. We can get rid of that. Initial outline, we've got the outline that we're going to cut out there. And then you can go ahead and just take your rectangle tool. I know the base of my light is 2.75 inches, and I like to make it about an inch high to fit in that base. And so we have that, and we can scale everything else down to fit within that base. Let's just kind of scale it down by eye here. And then something really cool we can do to make sure that we have this base set here is if we select that rectangle, we select that outline, and we hit this top box up here, it's going to join them together. So you have your base, and you have your outline that's going to get cut out, and you have your little player. So that's, you know, a basic trophy that could work for you. You know, you can do other things to add text and all that. Um, and if you go into adjust image, you know, you can see what it's going to look like when it engraves. I've, you know, there's definitely different, you can play around with the image modes, you can play around with the contrast, the radius, all of that. Um, I've really fallen in love with doing halftone. Um, I think I usually change between 100 and 125 cells per inch um, and using around a 300 DPI and that gives you a really nice clean image when it's engraved. But you know, that's just kind of 
kind of diving more into the photo editing and creating different things like that within our software there. But I've kind of taken over. Is there anything in the chat or anything that anybody would like to? No, I think everybody is <laughs> um, enthralled or uh, they're, oh. I think everybody is just uh, um, engaged in what you're showing here. You know, you're giving some very good information. Um, some guy in here said, Alicia is a whiz with these files. <laughs> oh, that was me. Oh. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> I see that you will have education go blue. <laughs> um, no, uh, and just so you know, we are doing, uh, when we're doing these files, we are putting it in our, our cast, uh, putting it on our cast acrylic, mm -hmm. which is available in our web store now. Um, yeah, she's very good with good info. Thank you, Brent, or Brett. Um, but yeah, so that cast acrylic is available in our web store. Um, also, we have, have available in our web store um, is tumblers. Now, the tumblers I'm doing today are not from our web store. They're from our personal stock. I don't have our stock tumblers here because they're, they're down in Mason at our new home, which once we get everything moved down there over the next couple weeks, everything will be much easier. We'll have all the stuff on hand. But anyways, we have 20 ounce and 30 ounce tumblers available on our web store. So please uh, go to our uh, web store to find our powder coated tumblers. Um, that was how she did the uh, acrylic stand there. Mm -hmm. Those stands are also available on Amazon. Now we don't stock those LED stands because uh, quite honestly, I don't know that we, we, we might in the future, but we're gonna wait to make sure we're competitive with Amazon which is a hard animal to beat. But um, either way, the cast acrylic we do have available in a web store, and it works very good uh, for doing these files. Um, so yeah, Kevin White asked, do we sell the bases also? No, but um, did, you, did we have a link for those bases uh, where we find them on Amazon? I can post one in the user group later. I'll okay. make sure I'll have that on there for you. It's just, I think I looked up um, acrylic light stand and then it'll give you tons of different options to look through. Um, some of them come with the little piece of acrylic. I don't recommend it. It's not very high quality, honestly. Um, I definitely recommend just getting some of that cast acrylic if you're doing engravings like this with the photos. That's how you're going to get the best results. Um, definitely questionable what they send. <laughs> what, I, what I would like to do is I would like to get quickly into um, I want to do real quick, I want to do a Tumblr. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have the file set on my computer, so I'm going to kind of hijack the machine from here for a second here. Um, I have the machine networked, um, oh, yeah. which we will be covering uh, here in a future uh, future uh, live session. Sorry, hit a metal wall there. In a future live session, we'll be, we will be getting into networking of the machines. Um, uh, the only problem is sometimes when you when you have the machine networked, it doesn't always play well with two computers and reconnecting and stuff. So uh, what I'm going to have you do is right down where it says Ruida, the drop down right there on yours, here to the right, uh, right up here, right. Oh, this right guy there. right here. Yeah, just select the the one in the middle, right there. Gotcha. And let's see if it's going to let me connect now. Testing out new things. <laughs> Let me see if I can right. pull up. Anyways, um, bear with us. <laughs> Okay, well, we will skip through that. I will put on get 
this guy set up in here. And for these tumblers, we, uh, we're using the two inch lens today. Um, it works. I so I'll tell you, uh, these tumblers, okay, everybody's seen the tumblers, but when we talk about sports and youth sports and travel sports, if you look out in center field, you're gonna see a lot of those tumblers, okay? Mm -hmm. I am assuring you they're probably not water, okay? <laughs> water out in center. I know, I saw it. <laughs> My producer's back there yelling at me and I'm too close. I like making him mad, angry sometimes. So let me, origin and frame. I already had a file loaded in here for this. It will work here. So more importantly, what I want to do is I want to run this file and then I want to, uh, with that file, once the file is done running, I want to show you a, a trick that I learned from Wild Gear that is kind of crucial to what we're doing with these tumblers. Um, Wild Gear, again, they do coolers, and that's Wild, W-Y-L-D, gear, all right? If you want to check out kind of what they do, they are, they do a lot of amazing work. They do, they, they have coolers, they have, um, they have uh, tumblers, and uh, they are not buying Arctic or Yeti coolers. It is their old product line. So Wild Gear is their old product line, and um, they're making some really awesome products. Um, this is my favorite right here. Uh, it's my my blue solo cup, if you will. All right, and it is uh, one of vacuum seal insulated insulated tumbler. Um, and they have them. They have them in, in like 16 ounce, 20 ounce, and 30 ounce. They have uh, multiple sizes on this stuff. But um, learn a lot from them. Again, they have a really great machine work. But more importantly, what I learned from them is the process that they use to clean these tumblers, okay? Mm -hmm. When we're uh, when we're done, we always say, oh, we have this residue, and everybody's like, oh, it's totally awesome. Use a totally awesome. Oh, use a magic eraser. Oh, use this, use that. Well, it's really it's just as simple as using denatured alcohol and a magic eraser, or they use, um, i trying to remember the name of the product here. I just had it up. Oh, I can't remember. You just told me to. Yeah, it's, a, <laughs> it's on Amazon. And they're, Here it is. Um, it, they're called Oh My Clean. And on Amazon, you get them for, well, you can get a, a 100 pack for $60 or uh, a 25 pack for $21.95, you know. And you're going to get one day shipping on a 20 count for $16. So there's a lot of different options you can get for those uh, um, generic, if you will, um, not. Uh, not name brand Magic Eraser, it's, it's own name brand, and I found that they work very well. If you're going to be using a lot of them, that's what I'd recommend. Definitely. You know, you'll go burn through those that pack of 100 a lot quicker than you think. <laughs> They're good to have on hand for, you know, pretty much anything. I like to use them with uh, cleaning off acrylic as well, um, not using the alcohol, but I use either the Totally Awesome or just sometimes just the water with the Magic Eraser works really, really well. But that kind of helps get into all the different divots that the laser makes. Um, I definitely recommend having as many of those as on hand as you can have. But. So it's just got a few more seconds to go here. It's almost done, and I'll show you um, kind of how fast and quick this cleans up. Mm -hmm. And the speed and power settings I'm using, I'm using a, a 15 speed with a 50 power, and this is a 100 watt laser. Uh, and I'm using a 50 power uh, with, a, uh, with a 15 speed. Now, they run most of their stuff at 99 power or 90 power with, um, you know, with a 20 speed, something like that, on an 1812. <coughs> So here is what it looks like right after it's done running. It doesn't look like very promising, but then I use Magic Eraser and denatured alcohol.
Oops. No cuts. <laughs> right? Just that quick is that shiny. And then, of course, you can wipe, up, wipe this off or wash it, you know, with some Dawn dish soap and like if you would to dish your dishes to get off any residue or whatnot. I will say it's a game changer for me because I've been struggling just how to get, you know, all of that residue off and he just did it in literally five seconds. So yeah. <laughs> he really kind of blew me away today. I'm learning, learning new things every day. <laughs> I will say too, that's a great thing about the community we've kind of built up here at AP Laser is you learning new things from everybody around you you know somebody's got a tip that's going to help elevate your product and you're going to have a tip that's going to help elevate theirs well I'm also I'm going to trust the guy that's doing hundreds of these oh, a yeah. day so. <laughs> I'll say um, I've only run about a handful right. so <laughs> um, now we also we talked about doing a baseball bat um, uh, Alicia, did, did you have a file set up for a baseball bat? I do have a file set up. Let me pull that up here real quick. This is just something super simple. Let me see if I can find it. Well, she's finding that file, and I also talk, want to talk about Lightburn again, because I talk about it almost every episode, sorry, is uh, uh, Lightburn. If you don't have Lightburn already, it's worth the money to get it, okay? If you have an older version of Lightburn, because once you buy Lightburn, you have, I think it's a year or two, I can't remember exactly how long the license is. And then you still can use the software after your license expires, you just don't get the updates anymore. But to renew that license, it's $30. And I did that last night and I got the new updates and it was a lot different. So if you have an older version of Lightburn and you're holding out because you don't think you need to pay the $30 for the, to renew the license, just renew the license, trust me, it's worth it for, to get all the, make sure you're getting all the new features. Just make sure before you do that, you have saved your vendor settings and user settings so we don't mess anything up. If, if it messes it up, we can restore those settings easily. I fought that today, <laughs> before this live, while our producer was working hard and busting his butt on getting the sound working. I was working on getting the machine working, so. And I appreciate that because I wouldn't have even known where to go. <laughs> So we've got it all settled now. So that's that's good news for me. <laughs> um, if we could pull up my screen in Lightburn here, you see I've got just a super simple, you know, I've got text, I've got stars, you know, go ahead, use that text tool, go ahead, use the line tool, make some shapes, you know, go crazy. It's really simple, straightforward. And I kind of size that, you know, I have that basic <laughs> outline of, my where I want that to be just as a guideline and again if you want to make that guideline go ahead down here at the bottom where the colors are there's t1 t2 that's, that's just fine. the tool so it gives you the basic outline there but you know super simple stuff <laughs> go ahead. so uh, with a tumbler normally you would wrote on the rotary normally you'd rotate that 90 degrees because you want this way but on the bat we want it flat right so we want it to be kind of like, you know, this is not laser down there. That is from the manufacturer that way, the, the name of model this, this bat here. But the question is, uh, unlike a tumbler, how does this fit? Um, it's a little bit bigger than my rotary tool. Well, that's when we make the magic happen right here. You can go ahead and slide, loosen this. Uh, some of these rotary tools are very different. If you don't have an extender, then you please call uh, your contact your salesperson and ask them how they can, how they can get an extender rotary tool. If you pull this to the back right here, and then slide it out. And I do want to say too, the rotary. I mean, that's going to give you your full all around. You can make the super awesome design getting all around the bat on that. Um, I did some tests on my own where I just had this flat on the bed. I used some super strong magnets to keep it in place flat on the bed. And then I used the four inch lens just to do this super simple design. But again, this is just kind of flat on the top. It doesn't wrap around. It's not as eye catching as it could be. With that rotary, we're gonna get 
you know, you get the ability to do something all around the bat. You can do something really, really cool that you can't do with just the four inch lens flat on the bed. Aaron works on getting that set up. Um, raise the bed up. He's got us to make sure we're checking the focus and everything to get that set. Always check your focus. Measure, Always check the focus. <laughs> measure once, cut twice. I mean, measure twice, cut once. So. <laughs> and you want to make sure that you've got that level as well. You can use that back here. Um, to kind of get a more flat surface. Do you know what speed and power we have set for this? Um, I used a speed of 20 and a power of 65 on my test run. Oh, I don't have the file in there. Oh yeah, we need to send the we file. We need to send the yes. file. <laughs> yes, most importantly, well, one of the most important days, it's got to send the file as well. And I had this set, like I said, I did a test where I just had it flat on the bed. Can so you this rotate is rotate that 180. Yep, but see that's not going to work on that. So we want to rotate it 90, right? So that it's no oops. 180. Get that all selected. Do 180. Because we don't want oh, this isn't meant to wrap around the bed, right? Oh no, that's true. Let's get rid of that. Yeah, we're uh -huh. going the length of the bed. So this is one of the cases where we wouldn't rotate it 90. We go 180 because. Uh, I want it to face the same way as the logos. And where would you think the best origin place for that would be? Let's go center because center. I'm going to try to line up the center of the factory logos on the opposite side. Cool. And I'm just going to make double, triple check that I have this set to fill with the speed of 20 and the power of 65. And we're going to go ahead, hit send. I'm just sure it's named baseball. Why not? If we can see it sent over, we can go ahead and we're going to frame that. Always make sure you frame it because you never know where it's going to end up. And if you're switching from one file to another and you don't have the origin set to where you thought you did, you know, it's going to be cutting way over there on the other end of the machine. And you're going to wonder what happened. <laughs> so one thing that will separate our rotary tool from other rotary tools is the ability to do these longer items. We're not just doing baseball bats. If you think of longer cylinder items that don't fit on what would be a standard ro sized rotary tool, then you need to get this extender. Um, obviously, you're also going to be limited to your bed size, uh, but if your engraving is smaller than your bed size, you can still have this underneath the, have it underneath the machine and just engrave during the space. Okay. Um, so the bat is running. We will post the finished result of it when we're done. Uh, we're, we thank you all for joining us today. And again, if you have any questions after this shoot, please send us an email to aplaserlive at aplaser.com. That's aplaserlive at aplaser.com. Remember that's laser with a Z. And with again, Z. make yep. sure you click that link and like and subscribe. Um, and and again, uh, Alicia, Brett asked in the chat, what's the name again? Um, if that was for the, bases, for the bases, just go ahead. You can Google it or you can go straight to Amazon and just look up acrylic light up base. That's what I did. If it was for the magic erasers, what were those called again? Oh, oh my clean. Oh my clean. Oh my clean. Not to be confused with Mr. Clean. Well, I am also not, although my wife and kids pick on me. Now, all you saw two weeks ago, I had a full head of hair. So this is recent. I, I do this every now and again. I go back for personal reasons to doing a shaved head. And um, that's not because I want to show off my scar where they took out part of my brain. They said I was too smart. <laughs> not really, but um, that's what I tell myself. It makes me feel better. Um, to go for light burn training, Kevin, uh, that's a great question. If you shoot me a question in the AP Laser Live at APLaser.com, Kevin White asks, where is the best place to go for light burn training? I can, uh, I can get you, I'll, I'll give you some information to get you set up with some videos and, or, and also some time with our tech team. But I'll handle that. If you send me a, an email, I'll get that addressed for you. 
Uh, that's AP Laser Live at aplaser.com. And um, yeah, the Oh My Clean is right on the Amazon. And uh, again, find our cast acrylic and our tumblers amongst uh, many other products that we have available in our AP Laser web store. If it shows that it's out of stock, I want you to call our tech support hotline at 844-364-8211 or your salesperson and ask them to check the stock on that. The tech support line will be able to verify the stock for you. They'll uh, transfer you over to our Mesa warehouse so they can do a stock check and see if it's actually out of stock so they can fill the order. If you see something you want we, and it shows out of stock, we probably, have it on, in, on a, we probably have it in stock or we will make sure we get it in stock and let you know when it's coming in. Um, thank you again, Alicia. You did a great job today. Thank You're, you. <laughs> um, very detailed. And uh, again, any other questions, feel free to email it to aplaserlive at aplaser.com. Uh, like and subscribe and take, make sure your notifications are set to where you can uh, receive our, uh, our live announcements and everything. And please uh, deal with this as we, are, we may stay a little bit uh, fluid or flexible with our schedule. Um, we, we're, like I said, we're moving and we want to make sure that we're not giving you guys a degraded product. We want to make sure we're able to give you the, the material that you guys deserve and it's hard to do in the middle of a move, but a couple, few weeks here we'll be all settled in and we'll be able to uh, make things work really well again. Um, I think we're all set for this week then. Ray Martinez, uh, my apologies that you got an email saying that it would start at 1 p.m. CST instead of EST. All of our times are EST. And uh, if you could send me an email to AP Laser Live at aplaser.com, and I would like to follow up to make sure that our team is all on the same page here. So if you could, please send me an, an email to aplaserlive at aplaser.com. Um, you can feel free to watch this from the beginning. Um, it will be posted later as well as a video. And if you have any questions during that process, if you send an email to that email address with the questions, We'll get your, your questions answered for you. Apologize you couldn't join us live while we're here, um, but thank you for wanting to join us anyways, Ray. Now make sure that we have everything on time for you in the future. In the future, it will be 12 p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time or 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, please keep an eye, uh, eye for that, and I'll make sure that uh, our whole team is on the same page there. Um, thank you again, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you the next time.